an LED streetlight from eBay from a UK warehouse, but clearly just a sort of Chinese import type thing. And I thought, it's a while since I've done one, let's take it apart and, uh, well, test it, take it apart and see how things are changing just over time. I have some others awaiting in the sidelines, including one from the UK that's faulty. So this comes with a pre-wired tail. It also comes with a couple of screws. The internal, the pole here mount, let's just check that. Hold on a second, let me grab my digital calipers. And we'll check the inside measurement of that. So I'll just zero that out, go to the inside of this, and extend it out into it. 45 millimetres is what that measures inside. So that'll go on a sort of 45 millimetre and below pole. Or pole mount. Let's get that out of the way. Is it earthed? So any of these things have not been earthed. So let's bring the meter in. Uh, we'll check. We'll put it round to continuity. And we'll check if the earth wire is connected. Earth wire. Are they learning yet? It's connected. I mean, I say it's connected. In the past, we've looked at some of these and the earth wire has shown continuity. But it's just chance that it's been brushing against the case. Or they've just trapped under a screw. Uh, other things worthy of checking... Where they have notes are where these screws go in easily. Let's just check that. This also stops from getting lost. I'll leave them in there afterwards. Uh, that went in part of the way and then suddenly stuck. Right, okay, I think I'd have to use a screwdriver, but they're not going in easily finger tight. Okay, that's reasonable enough. So the back of this, it, it, the front of it has the LEDs, what looks like a circuit board underneath. And I wonder if they've gone that route that they're using the little onboard driver chip that senses the sort of temperature of the, the material. And um, because in the past, they've tended to use the potted power supplies. The back of it, it's quite stylish. Is it, This one claims to be 50 watt. Let me show you the listing. The listing was from a UK warehouse, Globe, selling 100. Uh, it only cost £13.59 in the UK, including shipping, and it was available, theoretically, in 50 watt and 100 watts. I chose the 50 watt because, well, I don't like grilling LEDs. So if this was laying flat, this would fill up with water, which would be interesting, but if it's mounted at an angle, it will then drain down to this sort of, like, the lamp post end. I'm not sure, would you think this is enough... Grills, I suppose outdoors it's okay for heat dissipation. I have seen uh, lights fail because birds have built nests on them, or debris is built up to the point it's acted as thermal insulation. Okay, let's test this. So I'll bring in the Cliff Quick Test. The Cliff Quick Test, which is not being used for cheese. It is actually being used as the Cliff Quick Test, not the Cliff Quick Cheese this time. In a recent uh, video, I smoked an, a cheese electrically <laughs> and it was a baby bell cheese and the house was stinking afterwards. It gave off a lot of smoke. So I'm just hooking these connections under here and we'll also bring in the hoppy. So I'll fold this back and then I'll dazzle everybody by pointing the light up the way. So let's put this over here. Let's bring in the hoppy. And we'll plug the hoppy in, and we'll see what this thing does. It's cold white. Did I not order warm white? Maybe not. Uh, 49 watts on the button. 0.5 power factor, that's to be expected. 343 milliamps. That's very bright. Touches it with the back of fingers apprehensively. That means nothing. Beam angle. Beam angle is... It is kicking the light forward, I think. Is it creating a wide spread? I'm just uh, off. It is. It's throwing the light forward and creating a wide spread as street light should, and that's down to the shape of the lenses. Okay, so we've got 48 watts. That's the main thing. It is showing that it is the, the proper thing here. That's at 248 volts, which is our current voltage. Excellent. Things worthy of note, the, if it is the actual manufacturer, they've put their address and number in the back of this. I wonder if that's the manufacturer or if it's actually just, you know, one of these uh, companies that, the shipping companies that just pretends to be a manufacturer. Who knows? 
Right, let's take this apart. Do you see how the LEDs, if I zoom down just a little bit, can you see how the LEDs are mounted offset to the side of these elliptical lenses? The LEDs are mounted a bit further back. That means that the light is being projected over that direction. Over that direction, and because they're elliptical, it's being spread sideways. It is really designed to cover a road. So let's take the cover off, and I'm not going to use a cordless screwdriver for this. I'm going to do it manually. There's quite a few screws. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. What? Uh, 13 screws, is that right? Did I have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? 12 screws, talking shit. As usual. Oh, I've said one of those words that YouTube doesn't like. This makes me think of the first streetlight LED from streetlight from China I took apart on my channel. It was actually from Banggood, and the it was the early days of my channel, and they were one of the first companies that contacted me and said, "Would you like anything from our website?" And they were offering things like drones and phones, and I said, "Could I have a streetlight, please?" And they were like, "Oh, okay." And they did, to be fair, they did send the streetlight and it was quite nice. It was similar style to this, but it used the classic 1 watt, what the Chinese call 1 watt beads. If you've seen those uh, standard LEDs that are found in everything, I'm just looking for an example here. I'm looking for an example, not totally found yet. But the things that are in these little lights, where you've got the little bead behind the lens, they call those beads. If you're looking for that style of 1 watt or 3 watt LED, that's what you're looking for. Just do a search for uh, LED bead, and you you usually find it. In this case, it looks like surface mount LEDs. I was going to say that makes it a bit hard to service, but does it really? Particularly in this day and age. It is viable to change LEDs, but it depends on the circuitry if they're multi-chip LEDs or not. That is a lot of screws. Let's uh, Since this is chipped down here already, I don't know if this is going to come out itself. If it, since it's chipped down there already, I shall prise gently in there with the screwdriver. It's partly coming out, it's not quite coming out, it's coming out. It's not coming out at that end. There, there it is. So this thing, sound of scattering screws, has the seal in it. And the screws are coming through the seal, that's why they're more or less just being kept in position. Little bits of debris in the back of that. This bit of plastic is hiding. It's a standard driver. It's not using the modern one with the uh, chip on board. In a way, this is quite good. It means it's kind of more serviceable. This is just cosmetic. Okay, that's just a little shield to cover what's under here, the wiring. What would it look like without that? It would look perfect except without that. You'd be able to see the wiring inside. Uh, you could put the letters 5G death beam on this for the people who are into such things. And that's where you could f hide all this stuff. You know the paranoia these days about uh, 5G death radiation. So the driver is loose. Not sure that's a great thing. It does say 50 watt. Input 160 to 265 volts. They will do 110 volt versions of these. 2018, so relatively recent-ish. There's the earth. It is in a screw. It's absolutely rattling loose on the screw because uh, the screw hasn't been tightened down properly. Previous experience has shown that they sometimes don't actually uh, drill and tap that deep enough or use too long a screw. Well, let's take a look at the LED array. I can see one leg going up here. Is this, this classic... Um, it's a uh, 1,500 milliamp. That equates to 28 to 36 volt DC. That's like the, the arrays of 10 LEDs with 10... Uh, that's a sort of 10 by 10 array type thing like that. In this case, how many do we have here? Uh, 28 to 36 volts. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in parallel. And then the next one in parallel, like that. So this effectively just has five LEDs in series and ten in parallel. It's done, that, done it the opposite way. That, that almost suggests that the output across this of these electrodes, the, the terminals, will be closer to about 
Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Is this labelled correctly then? It's not a standard power supply. That's more like 15 volts, isn't it? Okay, let's test that. Let's bring the meter in and power it up again. I'll bring the uh, quick test up. I'll put that bit out of the way. So quick test and just remember that the earth is not connected properly. Neutral into there, the lead is quite short, but it's this standard thing. The reason the uh, the reason the wires in these are pre-terminated and so short is because they've already been potted into these modules. Oh, when I open that up, all I can smell is the cheese from that experiment. Right, this is where I'm going to have to get my dark glasses on for this test. Let's see if I can pick some of the silicon off that. I think it's mainly just strain relief more than anything else, I think. Don't know. So are these double chip LEDs then? They may be double chip LEDs. That would be annoying because it makes it a bit hard to repair. I'm going to plug this in. It's going to dazzle everybody. It's lit. Let's set this to about 200 volts. We'll put it here and probe onto there and there 31.2 volts so these must be double chip LEDs let me see if I can probe one of them 6 volts they, those are double chip LEDs I can feel the heat radiating off of that that's quite high power do you know one good thing about this they are fairly specialist LEDs that's slightly annoying it means it's not so easy just to repopulate the LEDs yourself if you have the surface mount sort of reflow stuff. But um, one good thing about that is that it's a standard power supply. And that means that if you wanted to get one of these and you wanted it to last considerably longer than the normal lifespan of these, you could change the power supply down to a 20 watt one. And that means the, the panel would put less light out, but it would be a lot uh, cooler running. So something like this could be adapted, it could be made to last a lot longer at the sacrifice of just that little uh, amount of power. These screws are very short, the ones that hold this on. Is it going to have heatsink compound in the back, do you reckon? It's a nice enough outline and I notice that the LEDs are all above heat sinks. Sometimes you find in lights like this, the circuit board that overhangs like this, sometimes the LEDs overhang, those ones get toasted because they weren't being heat synced through the back, but in this case they are. It looks like a certain amount of thought has gone into it, although I have to say, you look at the washproof seal all around the side, keeping this in mind this is pointing down, but then the actual cable entrance going down the pole is open, although theoretically that should just shed water uh, and no water should really get down into that. Is it got heat sink compound? It has. It's gooey. Is it going to be the grey stuff or is it it's going to be the grey stuff? They've put a decent amount on. It looks quite thick and patchy in bits. I can see where they've drilled these, there are little rags lifting up. Oh, and little shards now uh, underneath, thanks to me interfering with it. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I suppose this also gives the opportunity for putting in your own design of panels if you wanted to make a 12 volt version. Maybe they even do a 12 volt version as standard. I should put a couple of screws back in there initially, just to hold that in place. Uh, that's ultimately it. Uh, is there anything more I can even say about this? It is a reasonably well heat sinked LED street light. Keep in mind that the fins in the back aren't huge for 50 watts, but they're still acceptable. And it is theoretically outdoors where there's going to be decent airflow and convection. But on a baking hot summer's day, if the time switch brought the, the LED lights on prematurely, if they came on, if, say you had a faulty time switch or control system, it brought them on and they were left on for a long time in baking hot sunlight, that uh, preheating of the heat sink plus the LEDs themselves, it could result in quite high temperatures. Interesting. But you know, its construction is quite nice. The lenses are quite nice. It means that 
it's going to be quite accurate. It, it's a nice, easy solution to getting. In a previous one, all the lenses were loose and separate. This is the cover with the lenses all moulded in and that slight diffusion just as a texture in the moulding, plus the silicon uh, seal round the outside. It's It looks like a bit of effort has gone into making this. It looks like it's been sensibly designed. So where would you terminate this? Ultimately, I guess, in this style of light, you're not going to have much choice but to... You could either open it up and bring your cable into terminal inside, which is quite a lot of hassle with all these uh, number of screws, or you have the option of putting an inline connector inside the lamp post and hoping it doesn't really get too damp in there, though it shouldn't really. It should be okay. Dunno. Um, I've never really had connectors only except down at the base of lamp posts, and they've usually been okay. If you're doing it super Chinese style, you'd get one of those Wago clones that has the three connections going right through from one side to the other, and, and you'd just make a joint like that and shove it down the lamppost. That's how it would go. And there's its little breather hole for letting the smoke and steam out. But there we go. It's In a way, it's better than I was expecting with this proper uh, driver. Um, and not using the, the very, shall we say, uh, uh, the... The LED arrays that have the built-on drivers, I'm not convinced of their longevity yet. I guess the future, though, is the next step will be the chip on board. The tiny little um, the flip chips in place of these, just to keep the price even lower behind the same lens. But there we go. It's interesting. It was well worth getting to open up.